Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming out this morning. Uh, as Peter said, I'm Melissa Render, the VP of Exploration at Newfound Gold. And uh, thank you, Ken, for kind of paving the way there in terms of the geology, because here I'm uh, planning just to provide an exploration update, and I'm not going to be diving into the geology in as great of detail. So that was actually um, very helpful. Uh, so moving through here, um, here I encourage you to visit our website if you'd like to read this in more detail. Uh, as well, you can find a wealth of information about the project there. Uh, so the Queensway project is located in central Newfoundland. It's about 15 kilometers west of the town of Gander, as you can see there in the bottom left uh, image. Uh, this is a sizable property position. It strikes over about 110 kilometers and is strategically uh, positioned around two regional scale fault zones, as Ken was speaking to earlier, the Appleton Fault Zone in the west and the JBP Fault Zone in the east. Let me see if I can do this. Um, and these are the two uh, major structures that are spatially associated with the high-grade gold discoveries made to date. And you can see that very clearly in that image there with the grab samples, uh, golden drill core, and till anomalies that really map out those two trends. Uh, the project is um, broken into two portions, so Queensway North being north of Gander Lake and where uh, majority of our exploration activities have been focused to date and where several of our key discoveries are located along this segment of the Appleton Fault Zone. And that includes uh, Keats Iceberg, Keats West, Lotto, Golden Joint, and, and several others. And then to the south is Queensway South, which is more of a regional um, grassroots play uh, where we've been very active over the last few years with boots on the ground work, um, advancing a healthy pipeline of targets where we've now kind of uh, completed two uh, drill programs so far and have had some very encouraging uh, results. Uh, we currently have eight drills turning and we're about 65, I think that says 65,000 meters in and uh, about 584,000 meters uh, in total globally across the project. Uh, we've had a very busy uh, few years uh, here at uh, Queensway. Um, over 2023 and 2024, uh, we've had several new discoveries, including Iceberg and Iceberg East, um, in through here. Uh, K2 up in the west, uh, just south of where Ken was speaking to, where they're going to be starting their drilling. Uh, Monte Carlo uh, in through here, and Jackpot, Honeypot up in the north. And then we've recently transitioned to deeper drilling uh, this year and have been finding some very encouraging mineralization at depths at the south end of Keats, uh, between Iceberg and the Appleton. And then even more recently, which I don't even have on this slide, <coughs> is new discoveries below uh, Dome and the Golden Joint area. And then as well up into uh, the Kingsway, which I'll, I'll talk about with our acquisition of the Kingsway project from Labrador Gold. Uh, we've also... Um, unearthed and uncovered the portions, high-grade portions of the Keats and Iceberg uh, zones this year. Um, so I've got slides on that, so I'll talk about those in more detail. Uh, we've had very positive results from our first two phases of metallurgy that cover Keats, Iceberg, uh, Golden Joint, and Lotto. And then um, with the onset of the deep drilling, another milestone for us this year was the implementation of directional drilling. So helping to really improve our efficiency of hitting targets at depth uh, well below the current mineralized footprint. Uh, just quickly on the mineralization style, this is epizonal uh, gold system. We've got free gold in a multi-phase quartz vein system. Uh, that's usually associated with uh, blue angerite and boronite, which is a lead antimony sulfa salt. Um, arsenopyrite and chalcopyrite typically with lesser um, pyrite. And it's hosted within the Davidsville sedimentary sequence, which is a mixed sequence of siltstones and gray wackies. Um, and here's just a plan map. Uh, as Ken was speaking to, the Appleton fault zone strikes through here. And our zones sit kind of adjacent to the Appleton. The mineralization doesn't be tend to be hosted in the Appleton itself, but in a network of structures around the damage zone of the Appleton. Uh, so moving into the Keats and Iceberg trenching program. So like I said earlier, we uncovered both uh, these high grade. You can see in this 3D image here, it's our 3D model and its intersection with surface and the location of the Keats trench uh, and the iceberg. 
Um, we uncovered these por high grade portions of the Keats baseline fault as these zones are both hosted within that structural corridor uh, because until now they were completely under cover and we only had based our models off of drilling. Uh, so this was a wonderful opportunity for us to, to take off that overburden and look at that vein system um, in its full extent and use it to help validate our existing geologic models. Um, these are sizable trenches, as you can see in the image down here. Uh, they both have over a strike length of about 200 meters and from about 70 to 100 meters wide. Uh, so the Keats Trench, uh, we finished uh, trenching that last year and then through this year was completing over about 2,000 meters of channel samples systematically across it um, and a detailed mapping program. Um, the results of it were um, very helpful and validated what we had been seeing in our, in our drill core. So the results from the channel sampling, the high grade um, segments and the thicknesses of this high grade corridor matched very well with our drilling below. And it really gave us um, uh, a wealth of information in terms of the vein network, how it, how it um, compared back to our geologic model and the distribution of the gold across these veins. So we've now taken this information and have integrated it into our, in our model and this will again help support um, our initial resource estimate. Uh, iceberg, we were trenching that this year. So another major excavation, we just recently finished uncovering it all cleaning it, and now we're getting to the fun part of mapping it. Um, it is a spectacular uh, showing, as you can see here. Uh, this is the main kind of vein system that's running through the central portion of the iceberg trench, and we've got our geologist Cameron Peddle there for scale, and he's right now working on uh, doing a preliminary map of it before snow flies, and then next year we'll move into another um, channel sampling program as we did on Keats. Uh, so, so anyways, with the trenching, it's been very helpful in that actually our, our models have held up quite well um, when comparing back to um, compa comparing back to those exposures. Uh, so deep drilling update. As I said earlier, we initiated this deep drilling program. Until this year, we had really um, been focused kind of in the top 250 meters or so of the system. The intention of this program was really to demonstrate that we are in an orogenic system. They tend to run deep and we wanted to show that footprint uh, well below where we are. And we did that successfully. We've got about 11 new zones identified from those first 20 holes or so that we've done, um, expanding the footprint down to about 820 meters vertical. Um, this is a more recent discovery here I included that we released, I think it was last week, uh, Golden Dome, which is well below the dome discovery, as you can see sitting up in here with some pretty exceptional high grade um, and we've got it out, <coughs> excuse me, on our table at the trade show if you want to take a look. Um, but we're doing a systematic program, stepping along, using both the seismic data and a more systematic approach as well to the deep drilling um, to demonstrate the depth extents of the system here. So the Kingsway acquisition. So earlier this year in July, we um, acquired Kingsway from Labrador Gold. Um, Labrador Gold had been highly active along this segment of the Appleton Fault Zone for the last several years and have made seven near surface discoveries, high grade discoveries there. And through reviewing this project, it was very apparent that there is a lot of similarities uh, to what they were finding to what we have here on, on, on the Queensway portion. So you can see the Appleton Fault Zone trekking all the way up through here where our existing main segment where we've been focusing most of our work is located and now we have gained about 13 and a half kilometers of additional strike along the Appleton. Um, so this was a very um, important move for us, adding uh, a multitude of near surface targets um, for us to continue to, uh, to work on. And we are currently got three drills active up here right now and we're combining again a systematic kind of approach of stepping along both the east and west sides of the Appleton in addition to more targeted drilling where Labrador Gold had, had several interesting intervals, um, one of them being in the pistachio area just north of Big Vane. And um, our first few holes into there, this is the first result we got back which was um, very encouraging. that. And uh, to wrap it up here, just stepping well south, as I don't like to overstep 
Queensway South because again, we've been quite active, as I said, following the Appleton Fault Zone, uh, about 65 kilometers south of Keats. Um, this is our more regional uh, grassroots play where we've done several boots on the ground field activities like grab sampling, like prospecting, mapping, uh, soil sampling, a whole lot of trenching and about two phases of drill, drilling down there where we've identified several discoveries through the Paul's Pond area. <coughs> We're seeing the, a lot of the repetition of the same features. We believe we've locked on to where the Appleton is located and, and seeing the spatial relationship between the discoveries and the position of the Appleton in addition to new geology with intrusives, volcanics, and different mineralization styles all together. Um, and our first two programs, um, visible gold and a multitude of holes, <coughs> and starting to see quite um, continuity through our drilling in the Paul's Pond area. But we have a number of targets here that we're very anxious to get back to and uh, continue to advance here. So looking to, uh, um, 2024, um, it's been a busy year, as I said. I've, I, we're going to round out the year with about 80,000 meters drilled. Again, most of that focus in that Queensway North uh, near surface expansion of some of those um, more later discovered zones, in addition to the deep drilling um, meters. A good, healthy budget up at Kingsway to continue to um, systematically test through there. And um, looking um, to, the, to the rest of this year, we're hoping to wrap up our iceberg trenching and um, move from our phase one and phase two metallurgy programs that we just completed now into a phase three covering Keats West. And uh, we should get those results into 2025. Uh, 2025 programs, are, our budgets are being um, consolidated and, and confirmed right now, but we will definitely be active up through uh, Kingsway next year. Um, continuing to do deep expansion on the main portion of, of the Queensway, as well as down through the Queensway South Regional Program. Um, we'll wrap up the iceberg trenching next year with the channel sampling and look to unearth uh, likely Lotto and hopefully over to Keats West eventually. Um, we'll also be completing, as I said, the technical additional technical studies, which will involve Keats West metallurgy up to K2, and then um, we're working now towards our maiden uh, mineral resource estimate, as well as a PEA, followed by a PEA, uh, likely in Q2 2025. And then, of course, going through that process um, is going to likely guide a lot of our exploration activities into 2025 as the recommendations come out of that work. And that is all I have. So thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>